One, two, three, four, five. These funky little equations gonna keep you alive in the unit exam when you don't know what else to do. You guys probably don't even know Mambo number five, so I'm sure you're not getting the the lyrical illusion right now. So we'll just get right to the physics. This is Mr. Langdell. I'm going to talk to you about the fabulous five kinematic equations. These are all equations that are new. It's a very exciting time in Physics 20 because we kind of go from two boring little equations, you know, good old V equals D over T. And, and maybe we've done the acceleration formula by now. You know, acceleration is velocity over time. And it's like these two equations kind of got together, and all of a sudden, boom, we've got a whole bunch of new ones. And now it feels like physics because we have a big formula sheet we can use. So we're going to take a look at these five fabulous equations. And uh, we're going to go through some problems that are in the set of notes called the five kinematics equations on the website as well. So if you're having trouble with those problems, watch and learn. Here's the equations. This guy you're familiar with, this is for uniform motion, right? It only works when you have no acceleration, when there's uniform motion. Now, I don't really want to talk about that one a whole lot today because we're going to be talking about equations that do have acceleration, and that leaves us with these five other fabulous equations. One of them we've spent some time talking about in the previous lesson, the acceleration formula, definition of acceleration right there. So we're going to look at these other four fellows right here. Let's take a look at the first two. They, they look pretty similar, really, one, one next to each other. The only difference is between them, really, that we've got initial velocity in the first equation, and we have final velocity in the second equation, and here it's subtraction, and here it's addition. But other than that, they look pretty similar. They've got displacement, um, time, they've got acceleration, and they've got this one-half built in there as well. Now, you might be wondering, where the heck did that come from? If you really want to know, you and I should be friends because I like to know where it comes from too. But you know what? You can look it up in your textbook or you can look it up in my notes and you can see it. You don't have to know where it came from. You just really have to know how to use it in Physics 20. Two other ones here. This one's kind of interesting because it's a kinematics equation and it can only be used like all of these other guys that have drawn a box round for situations where there is acceleration. These are all acceleration formulas, but this one doesn't have any acceleration. That must mean, you know the A feel a little bit left out there, but you can tell it's an accelerated motion equation because it has initial and it has a final velocity right there. So any object that has a different initial than final velocity must be accelerating. Displacement equals VF plus VI divided by 2, then multiplied by time. And, you know, I, I don't have favorite physics equations, but if I did, this would probably be my favorite kinematics equations. I, I like it so much I gave it a name, the no time equation. And I call it that because out of the five, it's the only one that doesn't have time. Isn't that original? I know. I, I came up with that all by myself. Let's try a problem. A driver accelerates constantly to a velocity of 7.5 meters per second during 4.5 seconds. The driver's displacement is 19 meters per second east. What's the initial velocity? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, I've got so many equations now. How am I going to know which one to use? Well, just make a list of everything you're given. It says that this guy is driving and accelerating constantly to a velocity of 7.5 meters per second. That must mean that his final velocity is 7.5 meters per second. That's what he accelerated to. So there's my VF. I can list down my time. That's pretty easy. That's given. Oh, there's a displacement. Those are good. You need to have one of those. It's positive because it's going east, and we're looking for the initial velocity. So now that I have everything down, I can look and see which equation am I going to use to solve this problem. So I go back to my list and I say, hey, there's one that's got everything I need and nothing I don't. It's the perfect equation for me. Displacement equals VF plus VI over time. Whoops, not over time, over 2 multiplied by time. And now we plug and we chug, shall we? All right. 19 meters is our displacement. Final velocity is 7.5 meters per second. The initial velocity is what I'm looking for. Divide it by 2, times it by 4.5 seconds. Now, here comes the part where some kids get a little bit lost. We're going to do some of the algebra, so stick with me. It's not too bad. First thing I'm going to do here, I think, as my calculator comes up and fills the screen, is I'm going to try to get rid of, um, I'm going to get rid of the 2 first. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. You don't have to start here but I think it's a nice way of starting. So I'm going to go 19 times 2 on my calculator to begin with here. So 19 times 2, yep, 38. And now I'm left with this, 7.5 meters per second plus VI 
over 2. No, sorry, not over 2. We got rid of the 2. It's multiplied by 4.5. So if I want to get rid of that multiplied by 4.5 seconds, I think I'm going to have to divide by 4.5 seconds. So let's try it. Divide by 4.5. So now I'm left with 8.4 repeating. Now, you might be wondering at this point, what are my units? I took meters, I divided them by seconds. My units are meters per second. Which is good because look, look who we have, initial velocity here. I don't know, I guess I can go put back on some vector arrows before you tick me in comments. There, I've got meters per second, I've got meters per second. Now all I have to do is subtract 7.5 meters from sec per second from both sides. And I've got myself my initial velocity. So 8.4 repeating minus 7.5 is 1, oh, sorry, 0 0.94 meters per second. And hey, that's even good sig digs and all that sort of stuff too. And so that wasn't so bad. Maybe these kinematics equations aren't so bad after all. Let's try this one out. A biker passes a light post top of a hill traveling at 4.5 meters per second. Hey, that sounds a little bit like an initial velocity to me. I'm going to write that down as an initial velocity. She accelerates down the hill at a constant rate of, oh, this looks like an acceleration, 0 0.40 meters per second squared, and for a time of 12 seconds. How far down the hill did she move? Ooh, this looks like a good equation or a good question for me to use this other kinematics equations. Uh, Displacement equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Perfect opportunity to use this one. So I want to know my displacement. I'm going to take my initial velocity, 4.5 meters per second. I'm going to multiply it by time. I'm going to add it to one half of the acceleration, which is 0 0.4 meters per second squared, multiplied by the time squared. So let's see here, that was 12 seconds. Oh, can I squeeze it in? Squared. And you'll notice 12 seconds, 12 seconds, the time is the same in both of those two variables. Now I can just throw everything into my calculator pretty much exactly as I wrote it out. That's the great thing about these fancy calculators is you can just kind of type everything in just as you wrote it. I put my one half as 0.5, but I mean other than that, that looks pretty good, I think. So this object has moved through 82.8 meters oh, for sig digs. I got two sig digs here and here. I guess I'm probably going to want to call it 83 meters. If you're looking for a direction, you could say something like down the hill. Hey, this equation doesn't look too bad either. That's, that's pretty straightforward, I think. I think we have time for one or two more. Hey, how about this one? A beat is dropped from rest from a height of 50 meters. Rappers are always dropping beats. Those guys, they can't hold on to anything. If the beat falls at negative 9.81 meters per second squared, how long does it take to hit the ground? Ooh, this is an interesting one. Let's see what we have. Well, this phrase, from rest, dropped from rest, means that the initial velocity of the object has to be zero. Okay, so this is starting at rest. It's starting where it's not moving. We've got the height or the displacement here, 50 meters up. And you know what? Because it's going down through those 50 meters, one little trick we're going to do is we're going to make that a negative displacement. And you'll see why in a minute. It'll allow everything to work out real nicely. Okay, we've got the acceleration. This is actually called the acceleration due to gravity. We're going to see that in the next lesson or two here. That's how fast everything falls, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And we're trying to figure out time. I don't know how long it's going to take to hit the ground but I think I might be able to figure it out. Let's see what I've got for equations. Oh, well this looks like a good opportunity again to use that second equation that we were looking at. VIT plus one half AT squared. Now I don't know what, well I do know what my initial velocity is, it's zero. So right off the bat what I will often do is I'll say, look this term, the initial velocity multiplied by whatever the time is, I don't know what it is, but Zero times whatever the time is is zero. So this equation now has basically boiled down to something simpler to look at. And it also allows us to solve for time because there's only one t now. If there's two t's, we're going to have to use this thing called the quadratic formula to solve for time. And while that would be a lot of fun, um, you might not want to do that. So this is a much nicer way of going through and doing this problem. So substitution. There we go. 
I've substitute everything through, and now when it comes to doing the algebra, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. Negative 50 times 2 is negative 100. Then I'm going to divide it by negative 9.81. So what I'm left with here is, uh, is roughly 10. And if I think about my units here, this is going to be seconds squared is equal to t squared. Last but not least, I square root both sides. So if I square root the number that I got, we're talking about two, two significant digits, 3.2 seconds. So there's an, an idea that you're going to see quite a bit, this whole taking the initial velocity, making it equal to zero, and going from there is a pretty common type of thing to do. Okay, we're going to try one more here. A cannon is shot with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, travels for about 50 meters with a constant acceleration of 2.5 meters per second squared. What's the final velocity? Hmm, I got initial velocity. I've got displacement. Okay, that's good. Or distance. I've got acceleration. Yeah, all of these questions are about accelerated motion, you've probably noticed, and a lot of them will be now. What's my final velocity? Ah, uh, the good old no time equation. Vf squared equals vi squared plus 2 ad. So vf is what I'm looking for. It's still squared. I'll substitute in place of vi 15 meters per second. Don't forget to square it. That's the most common mistake kids usually make with this stuff, I find. They just forget that little squared sign. You've got to be pretty nitpicky. You, know, you can't forget stuff like that. And my displacement was 50 meters. Okay. Now, when it comes to throwing all this through your calculator, just do it kind of one step at a time. I'm going to put in my full right-hand side first. 15 squared plus 2 times 2.5 times 50. So that gives me 475. At this point, my units are actually, if you look at them, they're meters squared over seconds squared, which gives you a bit, bit of a hint that the last step to get VF by itself is to square root both sides because I wanted to get rid of that power of 2. Plus, I mean, for this thing to be moving this fast is maybe a little unrealistic. That makes more sense. 22 meters per second. Wow, that's a lot of problems. That's probably enough for you to chew on right now. If you have any other questions, you make sure that you come and ask. And uh, check out the section of notes on the five kinematics equations on the website.